Hey everyone, welcome to my tutorial series on GLSL, the OpenGL shading language. I'm going to be using Leadworks Game Engine for the tutorial series because shader creation in it is very transparent and straightforward, even though uh, shading programming itself can be kind of difficult to learn. What are shaders? Shaders are programs that run on the GPU and are primarily used to do graphics calculation. They are used to do things such as make 3D objects into 2D images, basically how 3D objects appear on our screen, as well as to do cool effects like motion blur or mesh shattering. Uh, and I'll explain the shaders in the graphics pipeline next because these are the types of shaders we'll be talking about throughout the tutorial series. Vertices are essentially just 3D points. So we can think of a scene as just sort of a, a collection of points at this moment in time. And usually the vertex shader will do some sort of transformation on the points. These points, while they're in 3D, they need to be translated to screen coordinates. And sometimes that's done through the vertex shader. The test two tessellation shader. So the idea behind tessellation is basically this. So we have a few different points and they essentially form a triangle. Uh, in real-time computer graphics, triangles tend to be the primitive to use because they have various attributes that make them pretty nice to perform calculations on. Um, so a tessellation shader, what it basically does is it allows you to make these triangles a uh, higher resolution, essentially. So basically you can end up subdividing them in certain ways. Geometry shader is also pretty interesting. You can actually do things in geometry sh shader such as clone triangles. Um, you can also do other things such as move triangles. After all this geometry has been calculated, we go to a step called rasterization, which essentially means that we have a triangle like this in 3D space. And at this point in time, it's only three points but they're somehow related. Rasterization does something called scan conversion, which means it fills in the uh, pixels in the triangle. So we end up something like this. Uh, there isn't a shader for that step yet, but you know maybe in the future there might be. Of course, the fragment shader is once we already have these triangles that have been made, we need to process the individual fragments that they generate. And fragments are in many ways like pixels, but you can think of them as having more information. And there's of course other differences between them. For example, you can have fragments that sort of stack up on each other, something like this. You know, like you could, you could have three different objects behind each other that each generate fragments. And in this stage, you, you basically shade each one. And then later on, uh, there is actually another step around after the fragment that'll oftentimes um, essentially just take the front fragment. There also is post-processing. That's kind of weird because it's not actually a specific shader. Usually post-processing uses the vertex shader in a pretty trivial way. And then usually the fragment shader in a non-trivial way. Usually how post-processing works is you basically make you render the scene and you render it onto a square or a quad, right? So the vertex shader does little, very little work because you want to keep the shape in the end. Um, the fragment shader is what you're doing most of your work on because you have a, a basically a buffer of fragments over here and you have to edit that somehow. Hit like or subscribe if you like this video and want to see more. Uh, tell me what shaders or effects you would like to see in future videos.